What is the best trading strategy and more importantly, what is the best trading strategy for you? This is what we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to take a look at all of those four different trading strategies. We're going to take a look at the pros and cons. I explain to you what you need to know. And we're also going to take a look at a very popular system for each of those strategies. So let's get ready and in the comments below, let me know which one do you favor the most. Scalping, day trading, swing trading, position trading. And then at the end of the video, let me know if your opinion maybe changed or what you're going to implement in your trading now. So we're going to go from very short term to very long term trading and therefore we are starting with scalping. And as a scalper, as a trader who uses a scalping strategy, you're usually trading on the one minute time frame or maybe even lower. 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and you're usually going to have many, many trades in a given day. Your holding time is going to be very short. Sometimes you just get in and out of the markets within a few seconds. Rarely you'll be in the markets for a few minutes. So what are the pros and what are the cons? And is it the right fit for you? So the pros are that you have a much, much shorter risk exposure compared to any other of the trading strategies because you're in and out of the trades very quickly. Your holding time is very short. Usually you're not holding through news events. Usually you're not holding through weekends or even have overnight exposure. So the holding time and the risk exposure is drastically reduced. Also, another pro is that it doesn't require a lot of volatility. If you are on the one minute or maybe even on a 30 second time frame, then you don't need a lot of volatility. There's always going to be some movement and those are the pros. However, as you can see, there are quite a few cons and especially for retail traders, scalping may not be the best choice. First con is that the spread and the liquidity play a significant role. So because the moves and the trades that you're in are going to be so short and you're only aiming for a few pips, the spread is really, really a big issue here. And you need to make sure that the spread on the markets that you're trading is as low as possible. So for example, if you're in a Forex trader or in a Forex market, you probably won't be able to use this on anything but the majors. The exotics and the minors usually have way too much spread so that you may not be able to trade those with a scalping strategy because um, this will just eat up all your profits. Also, execution speed and technology are very, very important factors in a scalping strategy. Because it's so important that you get the right price, because it's so important that when you click the mouse, you're instantly in a trade, technology, uh, broker, speed, internet connection, all of those things are very, very important. So as a retail trader, this is really where you need to invest and you need to also not invest in physical equipment, but also you need to really shop for a good broker, a good platform and, ha and really test the uh, the speed and the uptime also when we go away from all of the technicals it really requires a very strong mindset and you need to have mastered your mental game of trading because you're going to have many trades in a day and if you have maybe 10 20 30 40 trades in a day you cannot allow that revenge trading is taking over or you cannot allow any emotional problem to come up because you need to shake it off because the next 10 trades are already waiting and you need to perform at a very, very high level all the time through, throughout the day. So it really requires a strong mindset. And if you have any emotional issues, scalping will bring it up and multiply it by a hundredfold. So this is not usually recommended for new traders, for amateur traders, for struggling traders or traders who don't have access to a great technology and a great infrastructure. So scalping generally considered it doesn't work for retail. A lot of cons, as you can see. A popular strategy uh, for scalping can be round number breakouts and momentum pushes. This would, this would look something like this. We are here on the 30 second chart on the Euro Yen and I have drawn in the round number 134.00, so a very big round number. And what scalpers often do is that they look for momentum pushes at those round numbers. And very, very often those round numbers are, are used on the lower time frame. Especially you will see a lot of reaction, a lot of movements around there. Uh, a lot of flushes, momentum pushes and breakouts happen at those numbers. So this can be a very popular trading strategy for the lower time frames. And again, you don't need a lot of volatility on the lower time frame or momentum because on the lower time frame, there's always going to be a few points here and there that a scalper could grab. Next on the list is day trading. Day trading is a little bit higher than scalping. 
And as a day trader, you're usually somewhere between the five minute and the 15 minute time frame. And as the name suggests, you're holding your trades only on one specific day. So by the end of the day, you're usually flat, you're out of the markets and you close your trades. And generally speaking, day traders have maybe around two, three, four, five trades in a day, much less than scalpers, but still a lot more than swing trading as we will see in the next example. So the pros are that you have a shorter risk exposure compared to swing trading, but you obviously have much more risk exposure than scalping. As a day trader, you don't have overnight and no weekend holdings. So by the end of the day, as I said, you're flat and then nothing that happens overnight can affect your position, which can be a big pro. Patience is less important compared to swing trading. So for example, as a swing trader, when you only have one or two trades in a week, your patience is a very, very big, uh, big factor, as we will see. However, as a day trader, you will have many trading opportunities in a day. You don't have to wait that long for a trade. And when you're in a trade, then you don't have to hold on it for that long of a time. So this can be a very big plus. The cons are that it requires a lot more screen time. And this is, I think, the biggest problem here and the biggest con. So it's not feasible for most retail traders, especially if you have a regular day job, if you have a very um, taxing life, maybe you have a family, hobbies, sports that you also still like to keep up. Day trading may not be suitable because as a day trader, what you're doing is essentially you're looking at a specific forex session. So let's assume you are living in Europe and at the end of the day, you are trying to carve out a few hours for your day trading. So you're focusing maybe on the US session. So you have to block out after you come home from work a few hours where you sit in front of the charts, you are very focused on your day trading and you do nothing else. And after a long day at work, maybe you had some, some stress at work, maybe there's also a conflict at home. Trading at a high level, still being able to maintain focus and trade with absolute uh, razor sharp focus is probably gonna be very hard. So day trading, Although it has a few cons, it's very, very um, taxing on your daily life, on your schedule, because you just need to block out a few hours and just be there with your trading. It also is very necessary that you are emotionally resilient, um, especially compared to swing trading. As a swing trader, when you feel aroused or when you feel that your emotions come up, you can just close your platform and walk away and let the market do its thing. However, as a day trader, if you have three, four, five trades in a day, you need to still perform. If you have taken two, three losses in a row, you still on the next trade have to shake this all off and still show up in perfect mental condition. So if you have problems maybe with revenge trading, with FOMO, with chasing, then day trading will just exaggerate and will bring, will bring this out even more and cause even more problems. So day trading, I think is a little bit more suited for retail traders than scalping, no question, but there's still a lot of cons and especially uh, screen time and also opportunity costs um, is probably something that is here a main, main issue as a day trader. Popular strategies are often the London Open or Asian Breakout Session, or if you're trading the US session, it can also be the, the New York Open. Those are very, very powerful. And here I marked um, on the Euro US dollar, we are on the five minute chart. Um, this is an indicator that marks the Asian session range and you can see it draws a box around the Asian trading hours. And what uh, day traders often do is that they look for breakouts and for shakeouts at those uh, session extremes. So what you often see is that the market is uh, performing a breakout and then setting the tone for the coming U uh, European or New York session. And very often when such a session, when the Asian session is broken, you will often see then a momentum flush and a momentum push into a new trend direction. Now let's talk about swing trading and swing trading is a little bit higher than day trading. It's a little bit more long term than day trading. And usually as a swing trader, you may have two, three trades in a week and you're usually on the weekly, daily or up to the or as low as the four hour time frame. And your holding time can vary from just a few hours to up to a few days, maybe even a week or two. Um, there's what I, I differentiate between medium and long term swing trading. So personally, I like to swing trade on the daily four hour combination. And there the trades usually uh, last for maybe a day, two, three days uh, maximum. 
And obviously there's also long-term swing trading where we get very close to position trading, which is the next point in this video. So pros and cons, what are the pros? Obviously you don't need as much time compared to day trading. Whereas as a day trader, you need to, as I said, block out a few hours every single day to trade actively a session. As a swing trader, it can be enough to check your trades and uh, check your charts in the morning for 30 minutes, then maybe check two or three times uh, in a given day. And that's all you need. Maybe you can get away with a few hours every day um, or even a few hours every week, depending on how high you go as, a, as your time frame choice. The reward risk ratio can also be much higher because as the name suggests, you're really going for those swings. You're really aiming for those bigger wins, those really, you're trying to capture those big trends that um, that can happen. Also a pro is that it can be traded on all markets because as a swing trader, the spread is not such a big issue because your profit target is usually much bigger that it means the, the spread on your exotics or your miners doesn't uh, eat up all your profit instantly. The cons is that Patience plays a much, much bigger role and patience is something that many traders are not good at. So if you only have two, three trades in a week, it means that you have to wait for a trade, maybe one, two, three days. And this is obviously not something that comes easy if you have a problem with patience. And also once you're in the trade, then it doesn't stop there because you're going to hold your trade maybe a day, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four and you have to withstand and you have to hold through those ups and downs. The market will not just go in one straight line to your target. So being in a trade and holding onto a trade is also something that many traders struggle. And swings trading, this is really a big problem here or can be a very big issue. Another con is that it requires a momentum push and it requires the market to really move. Not always will the market trend, very often the market will be stuck in a sideways range and then swing trading is not going to work. You need to really have markets that are moving a lot in order for your trends to really emerge and uh, keep going. A popular strategy or popular strategies as a swing trader are pullbacks and transition breakouts, something that I also like to trade. For example, we are here on the Euro US dollar. I drew in the weekly 50 SMA moving average. And what you would do here is you wait for the market to come back to such a long-term moving average. You trade into the direction of the long-term moving average. Here you can see the price is above the weekly 50, which means the general up higher time frame trend and the, the longer term direction is up. And what you want to do is you want to buy for the lowest possible price. Obviously, if you want to go long, you want to wait for the market to become very cheap. And this happens here on a pullback at a moving average. You drew in your trend line, your support and resistance levels, and then you wait for a breakout out of such a range. And this is how you can time uh, long-term entries in a shorter term time frame. And on the four hour, you only need to check your charts every four to eight hours, uh, which is very feasible even if you have a busy life. And this is something that most retail traders uh, are often gravitating towards. Last but not least is position trading. Some traders may refer to it as buy and hold. It's not essentially the same. Buy and hold, obviously, as the name suggests, you are just going to go long in a market and then you're holding. However, as a position trader, you also can go short and then hold. So very similar, but not essentially the same. And usually this happens on the weekly or maybe even the monthly time frame. And you're only going to have a few trades every month. Some traders only have a few trades every year. This is also where portfolio building comes in, portfolio construction, where you maybe only have 10 trades in a given year. Um, so this is at the other extreme compared to scalping. Pros are obviously very similar to swing trading. It requires even less time. Your time is reduced often to researching on the weekend. Um, actual trading and execution takes a very, very small uh, part here. The reward to risk ratio can be much higher, especially when we compare it to day trading. And you're often going for those big three, four, five, ten 10x trades. And this can be traded on all markets. You can do it on Forex, uh, stocks, even options, futures, commodities, you name it. Position trading, buy and hold, because costs are usually not a big issue here. This is something that uh, you can use generally on all markets. There are a few cons. First of all, patience is even a bigger problem or can be a bigger problem compared to swing trading because now 
you're waiting for your trades for sometimes weeks at a time and you're holding your positions for weeks. So if you have a problem with constant P&L checking every day, you try to uh, bring up your broker and you check how much money you made or lost in the last few hours. This is something that may be an issue here with position trading. It requires momentum when the market is not moving. Obviously, on the higher time frames, there's nothing happening at all. So you really need to find trending plays. And also, you, it, it usually requires fundamental analysis. So buy and hold or position trading is usually not done only using technical analysis, but usually it's a combination between fundamentals and technicals. And it usually also has a lower win rate. You're going for much, much higher reward to risk ratio, and this comes at the expense of a win rate. So popular strategies are often a combination of macroeconomic and also uh, pullbacks or technical analysis. Here, for example, we are looking at the one week chart from Apple. Uh, we are using a higher time frame moving average. You can see we have a break and retest. And you could, for example, combine it with some fundamental sector analysis, some fundamental market analysis, maybe uh, earnings reports as well. And then you look for, if you are bullish on Apple, for example, you look for long-term entries um, at a very low price. So technical analysis are as a swing or as a position trader or buy and hold, not as important because you're usually mixing it um, with fundamental analysis as well. And those are the four different main strategy types. Obviously, there's also gray areas in between, but I hope this gave you some idea. Uh, generally, retail traders are somewhere in the day trading or swing trading range. Very rarely scalping usually doesn't work out. And position trading is also often very extreme for, uh, especially if you have a small account, uh, then position trading buy and hold doesn't make too much sense. So usually, as always, the right answer is somewhere in the middle. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you did. And then I will make more in the future.